This is Vegas Low Roller. His full-time job is to go to Vegas casinos and play on slot machines. Over the last couple of years, he has lost hundreds of thousands of dollars to casinos doing this, maybe even millions. So how does he do this for a living? His secret is to record his gambling sessions and upload it onto YouTube. His YouTube channel currently has 350,000 subscribers and over 330 million views. His subscribers tune in every single day to watch him win and lose up to tens of thousands of dollars per video. In this episode, I talk to Vegas Low Roller about how much money he makes, gambling secrets he's learned along the way, his previous job treasure hunting at yard sales, and I even go to the casino with him to see how he does it. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce you to Dan, aka Vegas Low Roller. So you play slots and make money off it. You do this for a living. For a living. Okay. Yeah. Let's just get to the juicy part. Okay. How much money do you make? <laughs> Tell me exactly how much is in your bank account. <laughs> uh, the channel does really well. Uh, I may I, I make more than I've ever made in the past, and uh, yeah, life is good. Uh, I bought a house for cash last year. Here in Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not nothing crazy. A half million dollar house, but you know. Okay, well, the fact that you're able to buy a house for cash, you know, says a lot. I think I can extrapolate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so based on my Asian brain math, he's making well into the seven figures. To learn his gambling secrets, I decided to go with Vegas Low Roller to his workplace, aka the casino, to see just how he does it. So what is this? I found a brand new game. This is what I look for when I get here. I'm like semi-offended by this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always feel very self-conscious doing this next to somebody new, but here we go. Okay. You're and good luck. This is meant to be because that's, that's my dad right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was triggered by this because this looks like my dad. That's, that's the thing. Weird. But now I'm thinking this actually might be a sign that it's good luck. So I'm in. Okay. Do it. Everybody, look at this. A brand new game? I told Dan, look, do your thing, I just wanna watch. And considering his channel gets around 10 million views per month, I expected him to pull out an expensive DSLR, a really high quality microphone, and maybe even have a cameraman with him. But nope, none of that fancy stuff. Remember, he just bought a house for half a million dollars in cash. And the secret to his success? Just the phone. And you might be wondering, if he's filming for hours at a time, what is he using to hold up his phone? His freaking hands the entire time. United States of America. I got me a wheel, everybody. Oh, look at this. Oh my God, that is beautiful. And then it's a tight skin. Oh, <laughs> Over the course of about 30 minutes, I saw Vegas Low Roller win hundreds of dollars and lose hundreds of dollars without even batting an eye. Tell me about the numbers here. Obviously, when you play slots, you lose. You know, everybody who goes to, to Vegas generally knows this, knows this. Maybe you can win here and there, but over time, it's a losing game. That's how the casinos make money. Um, how do you make your money? Is it mostly from YouTube? It's 100% from YouTube. Okay, so, the casinos don't pay you or anything to like no, promote them? No, I mean, I will occasionally um, be asked to fly out or promote a game or something, but that's like... One, one time a year maybe, you know, like, um, and I don't take on sponsors, so I'm 100% I'm pretty much ad revenue and, and, you know, a little bit of merch sales and stuff. Why, why do you not take sponsors? Um, I kind of like, I really appreciate the, the wholesome relationship I have with my audience. Like, I, I'm not constantly like, hey guys, download this, click this, buy this. Um, and I, and I kind of love that we have that relationship and plus, my CPM is amazing and, and the ad revenue is more than I need. Like I'm, I don't, I need money to play Monopoly. It's Monopoly money to me, you know, but I don't need to chase more. So like I, I do well enough on my channel. And how, how much do you win or, win or lose per day? Um, like what are the swings like? Uh, the swings can be rough sometimes. Um, I, I'm, on a, I'm on a really nice run the last couple of days. I won 10K last night, uh, 15K. 10K? Yeah, 15K the night before. Uh, that's uh, net. I, I, I've got three or four jackpots yesterday, a $12,000 one, a $4,000 one, a $2,000 one, but spent... Uh, in between to get videos. So it, it roughly, I ended up about uh, 10K. Uh, how how long does it take to to, um, to to win that 10K? What do you mean how long? I got, like how, well, yesterday I won the 10K maybe 10 minutes after walking in. And then do you just leave after? No, 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 I, I, had, I got a bunch of videos. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. 
I have work to do. Like, okay. I can't just be like, I got my money, I'm out. How long do you usually play per, per session? Uh, so it depends how many videos I want to get that day. It takes me about an hour to get half an hour of content. And I do two half hour videos a day. So you're basically working, quote unquote, working two hours per day. This is not including editing. Um, and then, you know, the swings can be up to $15,000. What about the, on the downside? Have you ever lost $15,000? Yeah, I think I've lost. Well, I've had, I've had several days where I've lost eight, six to 10. Um, which hurt. Oh my gosh. And then I had, I've had like one really bad day where I lost close to 20 and that made my stomach hurt. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Are, are you not afraid though that like, okay, what if you're playing and five days in a row you lose 20 K and then those videos don't get any views? Um, like, is that a gamble at all? Or do you think it's pretty consistent that you're like, it's not really that big of a deal? Yeah, it's, 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 it's fairly consistent. And I also space out my, my big wins. So I make sure I have kind of a few in reserve for those downswings. So I, so I include like a jackpot video um, every few days, even if I'm on a bad streak, I'll have like one in the one in the bank, you know? I see. Okay, okay, got it. That makes sense. Because the jackpot videos, when you win a jackpot, that gets more views, right? It gets People way more see. views. They make way more money. Like, it's almost like doubling what you want in the video a lot of the time, <laughs> right? Like, I'll win two to four grand in the video and the video itself will make that within, yeah. you know, the first month or so. I put Pete in this gentleman. Oh, that's weird. Right? <laughs> He doesn't do anything when you touch him, sadly. That's what she said. Oh my goodness. I mean, his eyes are actually bigger than average, I'd say. Who's this uh, fine lady over here? And is she single? She just winked at me, I think. I mean, they do that, they do that. But they wink at you? Oh, yeah. so it's not just me? I think it's just me. I don't know, is this a bed sleep or not? <laughs> What's the burden? You know, we'll, we'll let the audience decide. <laughs> Yeah, leave a comment uh, and uh, let me know your thoughts on this one. Break down the viewers for me. Um, is this perpetuating their like gambling addiction or do you think this is more of entertainment or do you think it's like the opposite where maybe they watch this and they're like, all right, I got my gambling fix. It's all of the above. So I, okay. <laughs> it, it really is. I get, I kind of give run the, the comments run the gambit. Some people are like, dude, I love, like I, I, I take your strategies to the casino. I'm like, I have no strategies. I just lose money. Um, you know, but, it, and then some people are like, dude, I stopped gambling cause I just watch you now. And then some people are like, dude, I don't even gamble. Like I don't even like slots. I just watch you cause you make me laugh. So um, it runs the gambit. That's beautiful. Yeah. What's what's one of the best comments you got that really touched you? And what's one that you're like, I wish I didn't read that. <laughs> if you go through my comments, you'll see like 99% of them are like incredibly positive. Like it's such a great kind of community I've, I've fostered with my channel. Um, and they're always like the majority of them. I love your videos. You make me laugh and so on and so forth. The top comments that kind of touch my heart. Um, are often the ones like, I was bedridden last year and I was in, in a really dark place and your videos were the only things that made me smile and, and you know I wanna thank you for that. And I get a bunch of those and those really touch my heart. Um, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, of course, are the, you sound like this, you sound like this comments and, and, and uh, I wish you'd lose everything. I'm like, dude, why? You don't know me. Like, why are you what so What do negative? they say you sound like? Like you sound like you take it up the you know what or or you, like there's horrible people that are just oh like I'm like what gosh. are you doing are you cruising around YouTube just looking to like talk trash like yeah but those people you just block and, and forget about it a second later and move on with your life yeah yeah it's it's weird how um, you know impactful content can be for people because you never would have thought that somebody playing slots would have a huge impact on somebody's life that way. Um, but I completely believe you because I've worked with creators where, you know, they just do some really seemingly mundane things like maybe decorate their room or, you know, this is my desk setup, um, room tour, car tour, whatever. And it really has a profound effect on a lot of people's lives. Why do you think that is for your niche? Like, why do you think that is for, you know, you playing slots. What is that dopamine they're getting or, or the happiness that they're getting from it? 
Uh, part of it is is um, I take my mom with me um, several times a week, a couple times a week, and they love that dynamic that 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 I care for my mom and I take care of her and I take her out to the casino. And a lot of people share that dynamic. They go gamble like it's a family thing yep. for them. Um, so so part of it is that they love that. Part of it is is that I'm uh, not not to humble brag too much, but like I think I'm funny. Like I'm I'm pretty funny. So I think I bring joy to those people. Like I'm, I'm truly like make them cry laughing sometimes with the dumb crap I say and I think there's there's you build a bond when someone when you laugh with someone like that I think there's also another aspect to it too which is that um maybe they I mean at least I felt this when I was watching your videos there's there's this sense of like I wish I could do this with my mom because there have been times where we did gamble together. It was really fun. We lost money, sure, <laughs> but it was really fun and she had a great time. And uh, yeah, I, I, obviously it's it, for me a reminder that I don't see my mom enough and maybe some part of me is living vicariously through you by watching those videos. Do you think that resonates with your audience too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's a large part of it. And like I said, they, 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 some of them remember their mom sometimes with, I'll, I'll get oh. comments like, oh, I used to go with my mom to the casino and she's no longer with us. And your videos like bring joy to my heart to see you taking care of her and things like that. Um, so there's definitely a large element of that. If you guys aren't familiar with the lunar calendar, this year is the year of the dragon. And that was the year I was born. So if you want good luck, prosperity and fortune, I'm going to give that to you right now. All you have to do is press the subscribe button and that dragon energy is going to go from me through the screen to you, and that's gonna last you the entire rest of this year, and most likely, many, many years after that. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel right now to see all the cool people that I talk to, and to obtain the good luck and prosperity from the Year of the Dragon. Have you learned any kind of tricks or strategies to either get more comps, or even better, win more or maybe lose less is the more accurate way to, to say it? I mean, there's definitely some ways to do that. For the most part, no. For the 99% of situations, the answer is no, right? These are little math machines. They're, they're meant for you to put a dollar in and get 90 cents back. And how that plays out is just the volatility of the game and how the math is done. But for the most part, if it was an even money transaction, you'd put a dollar in, you get 90 cents back. That's just how they're made. Um, there are certain things you can do to optimize that. Like there's, um, these people around town, they're called, they're called advantage players. And what they'll do is certain slot machines, they'll have uh, persistence in them. So like they'll start at say 50% payback, but you'll- what, what does that mean, 50% payback? Yeah, so like the machine, like I said, is kind of meant to be 90% payback. It's just kind of, let's just use that as the average. You put in a dollar, you get 90 cents back. Okay, so over the course of- Millions you, you, and millions of spins. Okay, yeah, yeah. It'll be- It'll be a 90% return to player is okay. what it's called, RTP. Sure. Uh, but there's games where in order to get to that 90%, they start at 50%, but you'll collect, let's say, wilds over 10 spins or squares. And on the 10th spin, those squares all become wilds. And on the 10th spin, the machine is suddenly 190% return to player, right? The math is just kind of set up that way. So so there's people who take advantage of it. And so and there's people that go around and look for situations where somebody got up having left eight spins with wilds on it with only oh. two spins to go where the machine's at the higher payback and then they'll play it that way or they'll wait behind somebody and hope they get up in an optimal situation and then take over that machine. So there's I, ways you can oh, game that's it. that's so crazy. I never thought of it like yeah, that. Yeah, they're called advantage players. I see them do that yeah. all the time. Yeah, And people everywhere. do that, you know, I... I the last time I played slots was like six, seven years ago, but people have done that to me. So that's what they're doing. Yep. They're called advantage players. Oh, no way. Yeah. Whoa. So how come you don't do that then? Because then if you're able to to take advantage of that and actually, um, you know, win some of them, you would lose less. Right. And in the end, that means you make more money. Yeah, it sounds miserable to me to like <laughs> to, to go around and like look at each game and then wait behind people. That just sounds miserable to me. Um, it's I'd also kind of awkward too, right? Like, what are you what are you doing behind me? Some of them are really aggressive about it too. They will like hover like this far from you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
Have you have you ever had that happen to you? Yeah, yeah, it actually happened not long ago, maybe three weeks ago at, oh, at wow. uh, a casino nearby, and and uh, to the point where I texted my host. I'm like, dude, this guy's hovering and like really irritating me. He's like, I'll be right there to get rid of him, and they came over and oh, backed him gosh. off. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. And sometimes they'll do it on purpose to get you to get up. That, that's what I thought they were, yeah, when yeah. you said that, that's what I, I was thinking. They were like making you uncomfortable so you leave. Some of them are nice about it. They'll stand far enough back and not bother you, but some of them do it like on purpose. But I bet if there, if this is a known thing, there might be multiple people standing trying to get in, right? And then they run there. <laughs> and it's competitive. They're competitive with each other too a lot of the time. Oh. So you'll see them kind of like who gets to the chair first type stuff. Interesting. Wow. I did not know about this world. That's, yeah. that's fascinating. And they also communicate with one another. So they have like discord groups and, and group texts and stuff where like if one of them doesn't have enough money, they find like an optimal situation, but it's like $45 bet. They'll like pool money together or they'll, they'll like just take a bounty for like a 10% for somebody else to take over. Whoa. Yeah. So it's like, the, it's its own like ecosystem. It's crazy. I saw a YouTube channel. Um, I'm subscribed to one where he's a card counter. Okay. Do you know this guy? He, he's like a British dude. Yeah. Yeah. With the I, red beard. Yeah, I forgot what his name was. Um, I forget too. I love his videos. His videos are so good. So good. But um, <laughs> yeah, they could, they, 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 he sometimes does a, a similar thing where a bunch of guys come together to Vegas. They meet here, they put on disguises and stuff like a freaking movie and then um they would go card count at these things and then pull their money together and then they split it so on average you know they're ma they're pretty much guaranteed to win money um guaranteed is a tough word but yeah yeah not good, yeah it's, it's very likely. likely yeah it's very likely they will be up considering there's they're playing so many hands right yeah. i love that channel yeah he's he's so good yeah how did you even get into this i like, grew my parents like loved gambling and so they took me as a kid to the casinos um they would give me a roll of quarters and and send me off to the arcade um by the time i was 16 i was kind of bored of the arcade and i was a big fat kid so i would put on a baseball cap and just keep my head down and i would play kino <laughs> a quarter at a time and i would play six numbers so i knew there was no chance i can get a jackpot or anything where i'd get in trouble i just keep my head down and play keno a quarter at a time and i started when i was like 16 um i've been gambling ever since do, <laughs> do you does do your parents did your parents know when you were doing this yeah they would borrow money from from me sometimes oh my god so like we'd come to to like the rio when it just opened my parents loved it there and uh um they would, you know, they'd get a room and they'd give me my roller quarters and I'd play Keno. And sometimes at the end of the night, they'd be broke and I'd have won like a, a six numbers a few times, six out of six on Keno a few times. And I'd have like, I don't know, five, six hundred bucks and they'd borrow money from me. Was it a problem in, in, in your family? Because I know, you know, Andre's parents, um, they, they, they had an issue with it. And he doesn't gamble at all. Yeah. Um, was that an issue in your family or was it really just kind of like for fun and you were pretty responsible or you guys were pretty responsible with it? Uh, they skirted the line, really mm. skirted the line a lot, right? So they would they, they would occasionally borrow money because they gambled too much. Um, they would gamble more often than they probably should, but it was never to the point where we were going to be on the streets because of it. You know what I mean? Right. So like they skirted that line just enough to where it wasn't terrible, but no average person would think they didn't have a gambling issue. Right. And what do you, what do they think of your occupation now? Oh, well, my dad doesn't know. Unfortunately, I think he'd be very proud. Uh, my Why mom, doesn't your dad know? He's not around anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, he, I, he's actually the reason I moved here to Vegas. And, and this whole thing happened in the first place is because my parents were supposed to retire here together. And when, I, when he was dying, he said, uh, can you take your mom to Vegas and take care of her? And so that's the only reason we moved here. Oh. And um, so she and she loves it. She loves she loves being uh, like 
recognized and, and, and you know, all that stuff. She, she loves it. Does she still gamble like for fun off camera? Oh, all the, every day, <laughs> <laughs> especially now, especially okay. now that she's got a son who takes care of her and gives her money. She gambles almost all the time. Yeah. So you give her just enough. You're like, look, if you lose it all, it's fine. Yeah. yeah I give her, I give her that's a monthly you, allowance. allowance. <laughs> I, get, I mean, I literally give her an allowance every uh, month. That's fun. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's very wholesome. That's, yeah. that's very sweet of you. Plus I take her with me and I pay for the gambling and stuff when we're together. So she kind of double dips as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so she's she yeah yeah she's gambling on and off camera. Yeah, that's right. That's right. She has her own channel. Oh, does she? Yeah, Vegas Low Roller Mom. No. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. She, she, <laughs> Dude, you guys are killing it. <laughs> yeah, her and my assistant they play together. <laughs> does your sister have one too? Assistant. Uh, she has her own channel as oh, well. Assistant. Oh my god. So my, my my assistant is Vegas Low Roller Assistant, and she has her own channel. Plus, she plays with my mom on on Vegas Low Roller Mom. This is just so, this is, this is genius. This is genius. <laughs> Bringing the whole family. Yeah, yeah, why Vegas not? Vegas low roller uncle. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll be Vegas low roller friend. Yeah, why not? <laughs> we actually talked about that. Token Asian guy. <laughs> Dylan was going to be Vegas low roller business partner or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> It just gets like really, really <laughs> deep into the feeds. It's like dog, be... cat, fish. <laughs> Neighbor. <laughs> like, subscriber. I'm, I'm dancing. You do subscriber. Yeah, yeah. That'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> but if that's going back to the, the, the parents thing, that's a little bit eerie, but beautiful in a way that your dad said, move your mom to Vegas and you did that and then you started this whole career. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, do you think, um, you know, do you, do you believe in some, some type of supernatural there or you think it was just a coincidence? Yeah, I definitely believe in, in, in fate and, and the universe kind of guiding us and taking us to where we're supposed to be a lot of the time. Um, I remember one time, not long ago, I think maybe six months ago or something, a, la a lady who watches the channel stumbled on me on a casino and she hugged me, oh, I love your videos, I love you, and then she leaned in real close and I'm kind of touch averse and kind of an introvert, so like when people get close, I'm like, ah, person, right? <laughs> so she like leaned in real close and she's like, you know, this was your dad's last gift to you to make you move here. And so that was like very kind of. How did yeah. she know? I, I've I've told my audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Geez. I no, thought no, she it just, wasn't like I a, she just randomly a psychic medium thing. No. I was like, you guys are definitely got some psychic shit going on here. Okay, <laughs> no. so you've said it on your channel. I said it on my channel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But that was also kind of one of those moments where I'm like, yeah. You mentioned that you don't like people when you know she touched you. You're like, ah, get away. It's not uh, that I don't like people. I'm 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 scared of people. <laughs> Yeah, would you say social anxiety? Yeah, for sure. Social anxiety? A ton okay. of social anxiety. Where, where does that come from, do you think? Um, you know, like most things, childhood. Okay. Um, we were, were immigrants and, and with, with uh, I think a lot of time with immigrants, it's kind of like you stay with your own, be careful of strangers. Plus, we came from Lebanon during a civil war there in Beirut. Oh, okay. And plus, we're Armenian, so we left Armenia because of the genocide. So, like... I think generationally in my in my genes, it's kind of like people are scary. Um, plus the upbringing part of it. Um, wow, that's incredible. What what were you doing before YouTube? Like, what? How did you make a living? How were you making money to even gamble in the first place? In my twenties, I was uh, a marketing. Oh. I worked in the video gaming industry, um, games like Anarchy Online and, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I worked on in the MMO space. And then around 26. And you did marketing for them? Yeah, I did marketing uh, and community management I, is where I started. I was a producer on a, on a Korean import um, called Fallen Age. Well, that was the first game I worked on. Uh, it was called Kill Ride in Korea. And we brought it over here, called it Fallen Age. And, um, and then by the time I left the gaming industry, I was a marketing director managing about one point or almost $2 million uh, in advertising money. Wow. Uh, but I decided I didn't like working for people. Uh, I didn't like someone like having to wake up at a certain time and go to lunch at a certain time. And I was like, this is not fun. Um, okay. So you weren't like a DJ like about to be homeless, you know, gambling your money away. You were making a decent living. You just enjoyed at, gambling like as a, as, as a hobby. Yeah. I mean, it was just uh, like, I, I mean, I, I, I had that job and I would gamble. I was in North Carolina for most of it. So there were no casinos there. Th so oh. that helped. Okay. Um, and then around 27, I was like, I don't want to work for anybody else. I lost the job I had. And I, so when that happened, I was like, I don't really want to work for somebody, somebody else again. And, um, I started playing online poker and I was doing okay at it. 
Um, I did that for like four years till it went away on Black Friday. Um, for people all- that don't know, Black Friday was when the U.S. essentially banned poker. Uh, you know, there's some some nuances here, but essentially poker was online poker was banned in the U.S. So yeah. how, how did you start making money after that? So then that was right when Black Friday happened, short in that kind of window was when my father passed, asked me to move to Vegas. Um, so I was like, well, what do I do? Like, I, I don't, I, mean, I was a big fat dude. Like, I didn't like leaving the house. And so I was like, what am I going to do for money? So I started buying and selling things. Like uh, Storage Wars was really huge on TV. Okay. And so I'm like, I could do this. So I started going to like yard sales and estate sales and like, it was so much fun, dude. It was like treasure hunting every weekend. What's what's an estate sale? Is it like when someone dies and yeah. then they, the estate, there's no will, so Oh, the auction? family sells, like, no, they just open up their house with all the stuff in it that they don't want and they oh. sell it. Oh, okay, I've heard of this. I've just never been to one. Okay, yeah. so basically the family says, hey, this person had a bunch of crap. Yeah. I'm just gonna auction it off yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, but they're more like yard sales, right? You just, I mean, there's those kinds too that you're talking about auctions, but like mostly the ones I went to, all the ones I went to were just like yard sales, except they were in a house. And Got all, it. All the contents were for sale, basically. Oh. And yard sales. So I would buy and sell stuff and it was great, dude. It was like treasure hunting every weekend is that a little spooky like if they're dead and then you're getting like this dead person stuff you're not afraid they're gonna come with you no i never thought about that thankfully (laughs) because i because i had sam and colby on this podcast and they do um like ghost hunting stuff yeah so now my mind's just like you know I'm always thinking about that now. Yeah, no, I never even considered it at the time, which I'm probably glad I didn't because I didn't want to. Th- I don't want to think about that. <laughs> what What were some cool things that you were able to flip? Oh, dude, so much stuff. Like, I think maybe my first weekend out, I found an Earthbound on Super Nintendo. What's and an Earthbound? So yeah, it's a game on Super Nintendo. So like, this guy had a box of Super Nintendo games, and they were like marked at five or ten dollars each. And I'm like, hey man, how much for the whole box? He's like, I don't know, twenty bucks. I'm like, cool. Gave him 20 bucks, took the whole box home. I knew nothing at the time about like what sold better or not. Like I was kind of learning as I went. Um, and I took the box home and I went through them and there was one game worth 40 bucks, which I was like, cool, this one game doubles what I spent on this box. And there was another game worth 30 or 20. Then I got to Earthbound and I looked it up and at the time it was worth 180 bucks and we're talking 10. Why was it worth 180 bucks? It was just a rare, oh, okay. hard to find game. They just stopped making it? And now it's okay. worth, God knows what it's worth now. <clears throat> like. I have no idea. We're talking, you know, 12 huh. years ago. Interesting. Okay. Um, so I was like, oh my God, this one game is worth 180 bucks. And I basically paid a dollar for it. Like, so that kind of kicked it off. And, and uh, I immediately was hooked. How much can you actually make off this though? Because I feel like that's, I mean, you tell me, but I feel like that would be a rare occurrence. No. Or do, does it happen like more often than I'm thinking? It happens more often than you're thinking. And if you're smart, you learn more than one thing, right? There's some people that only go around looking for records because that's all they know. Or they only go around looking for video games. But I learned about video games. I learned about VHS tapes. I learned about what little things sell quickly on Amazon FBA, like little uh, cameras or or films sold really well, or ink from printers sold like crazy. Like there's... Holy, like the more you learn, the more money you can make at each yard sale because there's gold to find everywhere. I see. So it's not, it's, it's not a quantity issue. It's a knowledge issue. It's a knowledge issue. It's because if you just knew everything about everything, you could probably make a ton of you money. You would make a fortune. But nobody knows that much. Right. I see. So the more you can learn and more you can keep an active memory as you're looking around a yard sale, the more you'll make. How do you learn stuff like that? Do you just like random you, Wikipedia pages? YouTube or? videos. <laughs> What like what do you search for? Uh, there, there's things channels, that are worth a lot of money. <laughs> there's channels dedicated to flipping. Oh no way! Yeah, totally. There's an entire niche. I don't, I don't know why I'm surprised. Yeah, uh, I've dude, there's seen, a niche for everything. Yeah, on there YouTube. is. <laughs> uh, look, I I have a course on it, <laughs> so I should know. Right. But that's incredible. So they're essentially saying, "All right, I went here, and this is what I lo- I saw. This is what I sold it for." Kind this of thing. This is what I found. This is what I paid for. This is what it sold for. This oh is what it and like. So you and if you watch enough of them, not only do you learn while you're out in the field buying and selling, but you learn watching them too. So you're just accumulating knowledge as you go. That's incredible. Okay, so can, can you actually just walk me through this because um, I actually wanted to go to some of these estate sales. Uh, my girlfriend was talking about it. Um, how do I start? 
Like you, like be my mentor right now. What do I look for? You know, there's one coming up on Saturday, let's say. What am I looking for? What are the, th- the things I should be noticing in terms of like, or, or maybe even back up. Is there like, is there a selection of houses that I should choose from? Or do you just go to whatever? I would go to whatever. Okay. Um, I would look on Craigslist and, and or uh, Yard Sale Finder, I think it was at the time. I don't know what it is nowadays, but okay. back then Craigslist was huge and, and you would have like a couple other apps that you could look at. So um, as a newbie then, I go to one of these things on Saturday. Yep. What do I like, what are the easy things I should look for? The easiest things are if you can find video games for like a dollar, buy them. You'll be able to flip them there'll be some in there that'll make your money back really quickly, right? Like really? for the most part, okay, okay. Um, gold, silver, those are super easy, super easy to learn about, super easy to spot. Like you just look for the engravings. So like- Wait, wait, wait. Like, like jewelry? Jewelry, mm-hmm. coins. Okay. Uh, um, so like one of my best finds was I was at a yard sale on a Sunday afternoon and like, it's usually picked through and there's nothing. There's this big bowl on the table and it was co- like, it looked like it was copper. It was, it had a red tint to it and I looked underneath it and there was no markings. And so I was like, whatever. But for whatever reason, I lifted the lid. This thing was like this big dude. And I lifted the lid and I looked inside, which I don't know why I did, but I looked inside and it said eight, two, five. And I'm like, holy shit, this thing is 80% silver. Oh, I see. And okay. it was this big, and he had like $5 on it. And so I went up to him, like, hey man, I'll give you three. He's <laughs> like, sure. I bought it for three and I went right to the guy I, I would sell my gold and silver to. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was worth $1,400 in silver at the time. Wow. Okay, so, so okay, I go, so I'm gonna go on Saturday. I look for metal things. Yep, look for silver, so, look so for look gold. For metal, and then I should just learn the, whatever the engraving. So eight, what would you, would you say, eight, four, seven? So like silver you could, is like point, uh, eight, zero, zero, eight, two, five. It depends, right? But it like that sort of marking on silver. Okay. Um, for on gold, you're looking for 14K, 18K, that sort of thing. Take a magnet with you. If it's magnetic, it's not gold or silver. So okay. that's an easy way to tell on those. Um, oh, you have a magnet with you too? Yeah, yeah, that's for incredible. sure. Because like, there's there's fake gold and silver out there that have the markings, but they're just lead or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And then you just touch a magnet to them, and like you instantly know they're not. I see. So I, I was actually just going to ask you, what if I have a yard sale? I take some fake gold thing and then I put the marking in there. So that's how someone would know. So yeah, someone smart would know. You can tell from the color. Like the more experienced you are, the more you could just tell. Like silver is really easy to identify just vision by vision alone. But it, unless you're used to looking at it, you won't be able to look, tell. Right. You know? What's so, so that was the most, uh, that was the biggest flip you made. What was the second biggest? Um, I, I don't know biggest, but I know the most fun ones. Like another okay, great yeah. one was I was at a yard sale in Henderson and like, it was just trash. Like there was nothing. I'm like, why am I even here? Like just, it was a, just a not pretty yard sale and it was hot that day. And I saw this little turquoise and bronze ashtray in the shape of a turtle. And I tried to pick it up and it was in the sun for so long. It literally burnt my hand. So I was like, ow. And I put it in the shade for a second while I looked around at all the other stuff I didn't want to buy. And then I came back to the turtle and I picked it up and it was, it was cool enough to touch. And I flipped it over and it said Hecho in Mexico and it had a signature. I'm like, cool, I bought it for a dollar. I took it home, I did some research and it turned out to be by this famous uh, Mexican artist called uh, named Pepe Mendoza. Wow. And he would do like bronze and turquoise pieces like that. And I sold it to a lady in New York for like 800 bucks, 780. Whoa. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I want to do this just for fun. That's, I mean, it's not like treasure even, hunting. Not even for the money, yeah, because once you get it, you're like, I would keep it, actually, if anything. That, like, that, that would be why I'd want to go now if I had the time to find cool stuff to just decorate the house with and, and, and you know. Yo, I did not know this was a thing. Yeah. I've been to yard sales, like, around my house um, just for fun, and, you know, I would buy, like, a mug or something from a kid because you know they always have the kid there oh yeah to, <laughs> always to, dude the kids are the ones that put out their ds games for a dollar you can make some good money off those kids oh <laughs> my goodness this is great yeah. i'm learning so much i should start a new youtube channel on that yeah right <laughs> oh. um okay so you did that for a while um then what what came next and then I, in the meantime i had started the youtube channel 
And okay, as like a side thing, because obviously like, this wasn't making you like filthy right. rich. No, no, no. In fact, like it was basically paying my bills and the rest was going into gambling with my mom, you know, sure. like we just go. And so I was like, well, I'm, I'm spending my money doing this anyway. I might as well throw up the videos like we talked about. And, and I think it took me three months and I made a hundred bucks and I was like, well, I made a hundred dollars from YouTube. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's great. A hundred bucks in three months. Yeah. Not bad. And then within a year I was making like a thousand bucks a month and it was paying for the gambling. So I basically for the first few years of the channel took what I made and put it all back into making videos. Right. And then by year three, I think I was making six figures. So I'm like, oh, this is now a living and I get to hide and like it's perfect. OK, so it took you three years, essentially, to get to the point where you were making a living off. of it. Yes. Um, yeah, that's 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 really fascinating. Yeah, and then the, the yard sales kind of fell off and the YouTube just became the primary. Do you enjoy gambling anymore? I love it. I love you it. still do? I love it. OK. I love so it, it. it hasn't just become like a grind for you. No, no. In fact, like I, I love it so much that that now I'm trying to pivot from not just being a, a YouTuber, but I want to. I'm starting my own development studio. Like I want to make slots. That's how much I love playing. Oh, okay. That's smart. Yeah. 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 Um, what are you gonna do differently as as someone who makes slots? Like, what's what's your vision for this? Um, so I, I think I, I I have a very kind of I live on like the razor's edge in terms of most people don't gamble. Even in the in the slot industry, I'd say half the people you meet don't gamble. I'm like, why are you in this business if you don't play these games, right? And then the other side of that is some people gamble too much, right? I somehow figured out how to gamble basically every day as a living, as my career. So I kind of walk that razor's edge with that very few people do. And so I think I have a, a great insight into, into what makes these things fun. Plus I have the constant feedback of my audience, like on a daily basis, this game sucks because of this. I love this game because of this. So I'm constantly getting feedback from the audience as I go. So I think I'm uniquely positioned to crush this. Do you plan to have kids? Uh, or maybe even a niece or nephew and they ask you about gambling you know how do you communicate this to them what do you tell them because I, I would think that it's bad to tell them like yeah gambling is great go do it but at the same time you've made a living out of it right so how do you handle something like that it's tough because or, or, or maybe maybe a casual fan says, hey, I want to gamble also, right? Like, you inspired me to gamble. Um, you know, how do you approach a situation like that? It's really tough because I try and be really straightforward with my audience whenever we talk about it and with people whenever they ask. I'm like, this is a losing proposition. Like, you don't make money gambling, like, ever. Like, you go for entertainment, right? Like, if you were gonna go out to a nice dinner, Instead, you want to go to the casino and blow 200 bucks? Great. But you have to walk in expecting to lose that money. Like, you don't make money gambling. If you do happen to win that night, great. That's gravy. You celebrate. Oh, my God, we won $2,000. That was fantastic. But for the most part, you just have to go in expecting to lose and be entertained for your money. Um, so there, there's definitely a sense of I don't want people thinking that you can make money gambling. So I put up all my losing videos, too. Like, That's good. Okay. Yeah. Like I'll, half my videos, if not more, are me just losing a thousand bucks or whatever. But thankfully, it's entertaining enough that they keep watching. Do you think that's kind of like a, I don't know, like torture porn or something like that, where <laughs> you just want to watch somebody suffer and, and lose money? Or do you think um, people are mostly in it to, to, to feel good when you win? Yeah, they love seeing you win because they also get the dopamine hit when they're watching you win. Interesting. So they're okay. sharing that with you, right? But they, they also don't mind watching you lose as long as you're kind of entertaining and showing the reality of gambling. Like sure. I get a lot of comments that go, oh, I'm really thankful you show the, lo the losses. Maybe, and maybe like 0.1% are there for, for the suffering. I'm sure there are some. I'm sure. That, I mean, I do get comments like, I love watching you lose. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> when you play a lot of slots or any gambling game, you get a lot of bonuses from the casinos, right? What are some of the benefits you get from just losing so much money? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's, you know, uh, 
some of the best perks are we eat for free five days a week usually if not seven um i don't usually go to the casino seven days a week but if i am we we will eat free every night of the week um that's one of probably one of the greatest perks like just steak houses every night and stuff like that really nice dinners um another perk Drinks i have too uh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Although you probably shouldn't be doing that five nights a week. <laughs> no, no, I don't drink. So, I mean, okay. I, I'll have a drink here and there, but I don't really drink. Okay, got um, it. And then uh, one of the other great perks is uh, I, I have both the casinos I'm, I'm at the highest tier at, Boyd and Stations, they both have um, box seats at uh, T-Mobile or Allegiant. So, any show I want, I can get box seats too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, like football Anything. games too? Any, um, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Why? Why didn't I get an invite? <laughs> I don't like sports, so I don't go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like esports. Oh, but you have to also be there. You can't just like. Yeah, be yeah, like, okay. it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's I have to go. Um. Is, and they'll buy me even tickets to shows at other properties if I want. So oh. I can call up my host and be like, "Hey, I want to see this show at, at MGM," and they will get me tickets. And, and take me to MGM to see it. Okay, so where are we going right now? We're going to Nico's, the steakhouse here at Durango. It's gonna to be totally free because it's comps. Oh, that's one of the perks to play, like we talked about. Because yeah. uh, you've given them so much I money. I give them so much money. There's their life just to eat for free, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got our steak here. Watch it. So you sure you don't have to pee for this, right? Oh, all free, man. Okay, you got this covered? Oh, totally. Because I don't have any more money. All, all free. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, huh? Cheers. Cheers. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.